Hey guys, Bob from the K6UDA Ham Radio Show, back with uh, your answers to beginner questions as promised on this uh, Facebook channel. So let's dive right in. Our first question comes from Brian Wood on that Facebook group. Uh, I am a two year or so ham licensed person. I am interested in beginning info. I've only had a Bofang radio, never had much luck in talking to anyone on it. So many videos are way over my head. All right, Brian, this one is just for you. I'm assuming you've got one of these. This is the Bofang UV5R uh, five watt radio. And I'm assuming this is the antenna that you're running here on this thing. Look, Brian, this is a five watt radio. There's really nothing you can do about a five watt radio. It is what it is. Almost every handheld on the market is a five watt radio. Yes, I know B-Tech makes a 10 watt radio, but that's really not gonna double your pleasure, double your fun anything like that this is the limiting factor right here that it's called a rubber duck antenna it doesn't get you very far all right suggestion number one go out to amazon ebay or your local ham radio store and get yourself something like this this is a b tech n a or it's a nagoya NA771. You can see it is much, much longer than the stock antenna, which means it's going to get you much, much more gain than the stock antenna. There's also antennas like signal sticks, or you can actually go on, say, eBay or Amazon, and you can order up a, a small mag mount antenna and then and then screw the end of that mag mount antenna right there on the end of your radio there in the antenna receptacle. And that is going to do as, about as good as you could possibly think of doing. If you've got a little bit extra money and you want to really do it up, get yourself a mobile antenna. Maybe something like the uh, Yesu FTM 400. Well, they don't make that one. They make a 500, a 300, a 200. And there's a whole bunch of other companies that make uh, mobile radios for all kinds of budgets. You can work on getting something like that. Uh, you can move it between your, uh, between your car and your house, or you could just put it in the house. Put up a uh, antenna on the house or use that mag mount antenna in the house and that should get you a whole lot further than uh, this thing will ever ever dream of getting you all right our next question comes from mark walter here's a question that has had me scratching my heads ever since day one of my ham radio journey why do a great many hams insist on trying to lord their knowledge over a beginner by giving highly technical answers and long-winded answers to simple questions rather than just giving a simple short answer when a simple short answer is all that is needed and more importantly all that the person specifically stated he desires what causes the radio god type trait that is possessed by so many to do this if a new person asks a question and states he is a new operator or just beginning to study for testing and asks a beginner level question why do people feel the need to give an extra class or quantum physics level answer and then follow it up with a postgraduate de degree level lecture and most always end with, I've been a ham for 30, 40, or 50 years. Then there is the question of why so many hams feel it's their sworn duty to God and country to ask if someone has a license. Or alternatively say, you need a license. Why? Why is that need 
to be that way so prevalent in the brains of so many? Just a couple of questions. Well, several actually, I would love to see addressed. All right, Mark, simple answer to a very, very long first question. Ham radio is a very scientific thinking man's hobby. And a lot of the guys in this hobby are really, really smart. I'm not one of them. But a lot of the new guys that are getting into the hobby are really, really smart guys too. And they understand things a lot better than maybe you and I understand them. So when I'm talking to one of these guys that have been a ham for 30, 40, 50 years, that's their frame of reference is that everybody's into ham radio for the same reasons that that quantum physics level learning about radio, about the science of it. If you're not, ask them to explain it to me like I'm a kindergartner. That'll usually get them to explain it in that in the words that you and me understand. Questions like, is it safe for me to put my hand on the end of an antenna and key the mic? Or better yet, do I need the $4,000 Yesu 101 radio or can I get by with this uh, FTDX 10? In answer to your second question, uh, or part two of your question, I can't answer that unless I know for a fact that you have a ham radio license. I don't know, man. Uh, guys just want to, they want to promote the hobby. That's their way of doing it. Frankly, I don't give a shit if you have a license, if you don't have a license, I would love for you to be interested enough to get your license. And uh, if you don't have a license, it really, it doesn't cost much. And it's really pretty freaking easy to get a tech, a tech license. Actually, pretty freaking easy to get a general license too. All right, there you have it, guys. Uh, a couple of questions from a couple of beginners. And don't forget uh, to like, subscribe, share, and comment on this video. Uh, you can watch me every Saturday on Rumble and X at Gray Man Survival. I do a JS8 call, 40 meter net on Mondays, Saturdays. We do the Southern Idaho Preparedness Net. If you want to go check out the website, you can learn more at s3films.com. I'm Bob. K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3.